Busy day on Saturday here at the Boathouse District, the grand opening of the River Sport Rapids. $45 million facility up and running today. Olympic trials and canoe kayak on the Rapids. We spoke with uh, Casey Eichfeld yesterday leading into the event. He's among the leaders here today, looking really good to make the Olympics in C2. He's all quali already qualified for his third Olympics in C1. We spoke to the Olympian and our old friend Joe Jacoby, former Olympian himself, for a one-on-one -on -one interview between the two athletes. We also caught up with Joe about his thoughts on seeing a dream come true with the opening of the River Sport Rapids right here on the Oklahoma River. So for me today, uh, C2 went quite well today, um, holding on to the lead uh, comfortably. Our second run, you know, we were already fairly relaxed, so we were able to go out there and just have fun with it. And we really, I think we, we brought the hammer a little bit, crushed it, got faster, had fewer penalties and made for a really fast run. C1, my first run started off a little bit kind of sluggish. I picked it up, but I had a, an unfortunate penalty. And then my second run, blazing all the way through to the bottom and then kind of hit, hit the bottom a little bit, got a little tangled up and ended up with a slightly slower run. But in the end, I'm happy. You know, it's great to get out here on the whitewater and get any experience that I can because every little bit of experience, good, bad or otherwise, is experience I can put into the bank to, to draw on later in any other sort of situation that I might face at a different race or maybe even the Olympics. What a day. I mean, we're here and Olympic trials and rafting and 1,500 youth rowers here. This is the day we dreamed about when we opened it. But I'm looking at all the people on the side of the river that for the first time in their life, they're looking at whitewater, they're looking at rapids, they're hearing the sound of the sport, and they're witnessing something cool that is going to fundamentally change the landscape of Oklahoma City for decades to come. One of the things I noticed is that people really like the bridges. They like to be over the water. I think they go there first to get like a feel of like, what's the big picture? And then they see that, oh my gosh, we can get really close to this. And they get really close to it. It's right in front of you. Looks like he is putting on a show. We're so focused and zoned in on what we want to be doing that a lot of times we're just tuning everything out. But sometimes in some of the more open areas where I'm just sprinting, I, uh, I think maybe my mind just subconsciously lets some of it in. It's like, yes, absorb the energy and then pull harder so I go a little bit faster. I have paddled the water. It is so cool. It feels like a real river. Um, it has good power. It has big fluffy waves. and. I will also tell you as a dad, my 15-year-old daughter hasn't missed a day here in three weeks. Big smile ear to ear every time she gets off the water. I mean, it is everything that we hoped it would be. I've, you know me, I've been talking about Oklahoma City for the last six years. You're here now. How right was I? <laughs> pretty darn right. It's pretty, uh, darn it's, right. it's pretty darn right. Yeah, this is a great facility. I'm having a blast here. Um, you know, I think that uh, I think that we can make some changes to the whitewater, uh, but otherwise, like the facility itself is incredible. It gives us a really good opportunity. I think that, um, you know, one of the things that makes uh, a sport great is, is having a lot of clubs throughout the country. Then these clubs can come together and compete against each other. And that's what drives these, these kids to become better. And then they become seniors, uh, adult athletes that are, are top across the world. So I think that we're going to be able to open an incredible or have a, an incredible club here. Uh, we're going to be able to have training camps here all the time, races here all the time. We'll end up having elite athletes here training. And I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be good. It's going to be amazing. We've got three whitewater facilities here now that, and I think that you might've had a hand in like almost each of them. <laughs> a little but, bit. Uh, um, so, uh, well, I, I think was, I was wondering actually, uh, just to kind of interrupt you for a second, I'm a serial interrupter. <laughs> So one of the things that like I've always kind of known is that it's easy to focus on just the whitewater, but there's a lot there's a lot of other things going on with the boathouse and the resources for the athletes. How does the boathouse district kind of factor into how the athletes feel about the whitewater? It was designed with the athlete in mind. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's incredible for us when we have a venue that has all of the training necessities that we need. So to have a weight room, you know, 200 feet from the same place we're going to train on whitewater, that's great because it just makes it easier to, you know, plan our days, to to do our, our workouts. You know, maybe we got a back-to-back -back workout, so I go lift in the morning and then immediately I get on the whitewater. And that, that allows us the opportunity to be able to do things like that. So I'm, I'm excited to have 
have the these these um, these necessities that you know are important to us for for training and and, and competing. So. been a long hard road for all of us everybody um, has been has been on this road more than just the four years to this Olympics probably eight years or 12 years or 16 years I mean everybody is just constantly on this road to the Olympics and I mean that's when, when we finally get to achieve that moment it's incredible it's really sad to me that this could be the last last C2 um, or the last time that the Olympics host the C2 at least the the men's C2 um, so that's that's really sad to me because it, kind of in my mind, you know, the C2 is probably the coolest one because, you know, there, there are two people in a boat, you know, we don't talk, we just learn each other so well that we know what the other one's going to do and I think that's a really cool cool camaraderie and, and connection that you don't get to see in the singles. My, my, the, my theory on why the doubles canoe was always so popular is that, you know, it's a small sport. I think people really see the love that we have for the sport, and it's so natural to want to share it. What is the one boat that actually exemplifies the way that gets shared? It's the C2. Exactly. I agree completely. You know, I get the, I get the, the ability to race in both single and double, and, uh, you know, it's always really nice to be able to, uh, to do well in the single, and I love it, and, 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 and I'm always proud of, of every moment in that, but... When I get to do well in the C2, I have Devin there to share it with me uh, and probably cry a little bit more because he's with me.